or affirm that the testimony you shall give in this matter will be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth, so help you God. I do. You can put your hand down. Please state your true and correct name for the record. Tamara Anita Smith. And um, Ms. Smith, let me make sure I uh, note that. Ms. Smith, um, what is your current employment? I work with um, State Farm. Okay. And prior to working at State Farm, where did you work? With the Department of Family and Children's Services. When you worked with the Department of Family and Children's Services, did you have a different last name? I did. Okay. You since, since gotten married, correct? Absolutely. All right. Um, what years were you with the Department of Children and Family Services? Um, I originally started in 2007. I worked through 2010. I left to do some other things, and I came back in, I want to say 2013 or 2014. When you came back in 2013 or 14, uh, what county were you working in? I was working in Henry County. And what was your role? I started as a case manager for foster care, and I was promoted to foster care supervisor. In 2015, uh, were you a foster care supervisor? Yes. And can you explain to the ladies and gentlemen of the jury what that meant to be a foster care supervisor? If you will, give me a moment. I'm out of breath. I came up the steps. That's okay. Take I'm your sorry. time. <laughs> the elevator wasn't moving. Do you need some water or something? Uh, please. Summer heat and pregnancy. I'm sorry. <laughs> That's um, okay. Take your time. So, um, being a, a, a supervisor, I was managing a unit. I can't remember how many at this time, but we oversee quite a few things. Um, just the day-to-day -day functioning, um, helping with the case managers, just a lot of managerial things. Just it's a it's a number of things that we do. Okay. Um, were you a supervisor for a person by the name of Samantha White? Yes, I was. And what was Samantha White's role at DFAX? She was a foster care case manager. And um, was she the foster care case manager for uh, Layla Daniel and M Millie Place's case? Yes, she was. What are the uh, responsibilities for a case manager um, at DFAX, foster care case manager? Um, following, it's, it's a lot of things too, but when we have custody of a child, of course, we try to meet the needs of every child that we have. We make sure they're safe in their placements, um, making contact with them, um, working towards unification with their families. It's, and a lot of things fall under that umbrella. Okay. So. Right. Uh, do you ever, do they ever attend court hearings? Yes, we did have hearings. Um, do they um, go to the home where the uh, foster children are placed. Yes. How often um, do they go to the home? At the time it was required once a month. And when they go to the home, um, about how long usually are those home visits? Um, I would say a minimum an hour. Should be. Okay. When they go and do a home visit, what type of things should the case manager be doing at that home visit? Um, you want to first and foremost assess safety. So you want to make sure that the child is also doing well in the placement. Um, you speak with the foster parent to see if there are any issues that have arrived. Um, you look at their you look at their room. You look at um, where they're sleeping. Make sure they have enough clothes. Depending on age, you have to look at other things. Um, you, you ask about school if they're school age. It's just the number of things that you have to assess while you're there. Okay. What about if a child is nonverbal, meaning they haven't started to talk, or at least talk very well? Are mm -hmm. there any additional steps that need to be taken? Absolutely. Um, when a child is nonverbal, you want to see them undressed. Even if they're in a pamper, you want to make sure you change that pamper so that you can see that child fully unclothed every month. And if a child's nonverbal, should the case manager be doing that at every, every visit? Every home visit. Do you remember um, from your time there about how large the average caseload was? Um, Henry County wasn't high that I can remember, but I don't remember the exact caseload at that time. Um, it wasn't as high as when I worked in previous counties. So. Outside of that, that single um, monthly visit, could there be other visits um, that the case manager has with the foster parents? Yes, sometimes. Um, you would make visits at, if, say for instance, they're involved in other activities or if they have something at school, if they're school age. 
you would see them there as well as in the home. Um, now, Ms. White, what was her level of experience uh, when you supervised her? Um, she was a very new case manager. Did you have any uh, complaints or concerns about, about her when you supervised her? Yes. And what were those? Um, it was follow-up, um, making sure that things were done when we would have a meeting and I would say, oh, this might need to be done. Um, we would come back to the next meeting and some, in some cases and things still were not done. Can you give us the, an example of what you mean? Sometimes children need services in the home. We have to make referrals out for them to get those services for the people to come in and assess the kids. What kind of um, services are we talking about here for those of us who, who aren't as familiar with defects? Okay. Um, it just depends on the child again, but a lot of it is in-home therapy, play therapy for younger kids that are nonverbal. It helps us to find out other things if other things are going on that we might not be aware of. Um, and so your concern, one of your concerns was she didn't always have the best follow-up, correct? Correct. Now, um, when you uh, supervised her, did you ever go out on home visits with her? Initially, when I started, Samantha started around the same time when I started in Henry before I was promoted. So she actually went out with me as a case manager um, a couple of times on some visits. But when she was actually a worker, I can't recall going on a visit with her. Did you ever go on a home visit with her to visit Layla or um, Millie? No, I did not. Now, speaking of Layla and Millie, um, do you recall the first time that you ever heard about these two children? I don't, other than, you know, they came into care. Okay. Um, is it, as a supervisor, is it part of your job to know every single kid that's on in the foster care system? Yes and no. Okay, explain that. Um, we kind of live through our case managers, so they kind of paint the story for us as to what's happening with the child, what's going on with them and their families. I might not always have direct contact with them as a supervisor. Okay. Do you, are, were you familiar with the reason why the children were in um, uh, defects care? At this time, I don't recall. I'm sorry, but That's okay. I don't remember. Um, I want to talk a little bit about the placement. Um, do you recall um, how the children ended up being pla placed with the Rosenbaums? Yes. Um, Samantha listed them as one of the people that were a fictive kin. And what is a fictive kin? Tell us a little bit more about that. So a fictive kin is not a blood relative. They're not foster parents, but they're someone that has a connection with the family. And you would typically get permission from the family to say, hey, this is someone that we know, and we would like for our kids to be placed here. What about the screening process to place a child with fictive kin? Um, is um, it the same as a, as a foster placement? Foster homes are done differently. We had a person in the office that actually handled all of the foster homes. When we were doing relative placements, we would get what we call a relative assessment. Okay. So did, um, what about the training or the, the classes that are supposed to, the fictive kin are supposed to go through? Are those the same or were they the same at that time? There are no class requirements for relatives. What or about fictive? fictive? There are no class requirements. The, um, now you said that the Miss Rosenbaum um, was treated as a fictive kin and why was that to your recollection? Samantha told me that this was someone her mom was placed in foster care with when she was in care and that they were friends. Okay. Now, do you recall a situation, uh, are you familiar with a person by the name of Patricia Lambert? Yes, she was a foster parent. Okay. And were, was there ever a situation where she voiced any concerns about the, the, uh, the children? Yes, there was. And tell us about that. Um, Ms. Lambert came to the office and I think Samantha was out on leave. And she stated that, um, and Ms. Lambert has a very he heavy accent, um, but she stated that um, something was not right. Okay. Um, and that's what she kept saying, but. I'll move on. All right. Um, the, what, when you, when Ms. Lambert came into the office, did she um, present you with anything? There were some photos that were sent. They were also emailed and it looked like scratches. Okay. Now, at that time, did you have any concerns about the photos that she showed? Well, what I did was, and I spoke with Ms. Ebony Taylor, who was the administrator at the time. Um, she actually saw the photos as well. It was a bunch of people that saw them. They asked for us to have Samantha to go out and follow up to see if there were any other concerns and to speak with Ms. Lambert in further detail. Okay. 
Um, and based upon all that, at that point, did you have any concerns about the photos that were shown? No. Um, now, regarding the placement, uh, was there anything else that uh, you received um, that, let's say, was out of the ordinary regarding, uh, regarding um, how the children got placed with the Rosenbaums? No. Did you ever receive anything from any of the, of the judges in this particular case? Oh, oh yeah. It was an email, but it was, it was an email asking, you know, when we were going to place and if we were not going to place, so to speak, um, okay. and asking for a reason why we weren't. Was that out of the ordinary? Uh, from, I, that was my first time in, you know, having an email from a judge in reference to a placement. Now, did you know uh, Ms. Rosenbaum prior to the placement? No, I did not. Did you know Joseph Rosenbaum prior to the placement? No, I did not. Okay. Did you ever um, see Ms. Rosenbaum at any point um, while, through your work at DFACS? No. Well, in passing, I'm sorry, at juvenile court. Did you ever have any interactions with her at that point? No. All right. What about um, after Layla's death? Um, she came into the office, I want to say it was the morning after. And do you recall anything about her demeanor that you, that you remember? It was somewhat of a blank stare when I saw her. That's all I can remember. Okay. Um, did you have, at, from that point on though, did you have any further role in the investigation? No. Now, um, let's talk a little bit about some protocol. Um, if a child um, in, that's in foster care receives a broken bone, are there any sort of uh, procedures that the case manager is supposed to follow? Yes. And You're what are those procedures? To first notify your supervisor. Um, you also to make a referral to CPS to follow up and do further investigation. And when you say CPS, what is that? Okay, so foster care and there's child protective services investigation. Um, there's also the foster care spectrum. The CPS investigative team, they do more follow-up, more involved investigations for it. Um, things that you might suspect to be abuse or we make sure that it's not abuse. Okay. Um, and so if there is a, is that standard protocol for any time if there's any, any significant injury? Yes. And would a broken bone fall within that, within that spectrum? Most definitely. Um, are you aware of any sort of uh, report being made by Ms. White regarding um, any broken bones on Layla Daniel? No. Um, did she ever contact you directly about any uh, broken bones um, from Layla Daniel? No. Um, Ms. Smith, um, you're no longer with DFAS, correct? That's correct. Um, and you were actually terminated as a result of this case, is that correct? That's correct. Nothing further at this time. Ms. Warner, good morning. My good morning. name is Corrine Mull. I just have a number of questions for you. You've been sued in this case, is that correct? Um, there is a civil case. Okay. There is a civil case, and were, were you sued in that case? Are you a defendant in that case? Yes, I was named in that case. When you say you were named, were you sued in your capacity? Were you are you a defendant in that case? Yes. Ms. Taylor, I want to talk to you about the incident in um, Loretta Brown's household uh, that, I'm sorry, let me strange that, Ms. Lambert's household with regards to marks and bruises. You saw the photographs. Yes. Ebony Taylor, the director, saw the photographs. She was the administrator at the time. She, was she the saw them as well. Uh, other people in the office saw them. Yes. Miss Macedon saw them. Yes. And um, did you not make a determination that they did those uh, marks did not rise to the level of abuse? The photos that I saw. Yes. Did not. Did not what? did not rise to the level of what we would consider abuse at that time. Okay. What did you see that did not rise to that level? I can't remember where they were, but they looked like scratches. Like scratches? Mm -hmm. And what did you think about scratches? Well, what Samantha told me was that they were playing at the playground and they mm -hmm. fell. They were scratches. So is it not true, Ms. 
order that you also considered that these were healing and uh, or healed marks? I did not. You did not look at that? I did not determine if they were healing or if they were new. Did you uh, make any notation with regards to the fact that they were healing or healed? I don't recall at this time. Now, you wrote a case note in April of 2015 with regards to efforts made to place the children with relatives, correct? I don't recall, but... Does that sound... Would you have done that? Typically, my notes would include efforts to place with relatives. Were there anybody willing to take these children at that time? Not that I'm aware of. Um, this fictive kin, the standards are different than from foster parents, correct? That's correct. And with fictive kin, home studies do not go through Ms. Odikpo, correct? That's correct. And Ms. Odikpo would have nothing to do with fictive kin, correct? That's correct. Now, you wrote that Millie in September is received in September of 2015 was receiving counseling services through pathways to uh, address any past trauma experienced as well as to being adjusted in foster care do you recall that yes and um, that was uh, that was in November of 2015 correct I'm sorry did you say September or September November? I'm sorry, September of 2015? I would have to look at the notes to be sure okay. when I wrote it, but. Let me show you, see if this refreshes your recollection. So in September of 2015, the child would have to have been taken to a counselor, correct? I'm not sure if that was in home or if they were being taken somewhere. Okay, so counseling was either done in home or the child would have been taken to the counselor. Correct. And so in September 2015, the child was in counseling at least for a period of time. Correct. Now. You also wrote a note that in August of 2015 that the children were doing well and adjusting to living with the Rosenbaums, didn't you? Yes, and that is from what was reported to me by Samantha White. Now, you have testified here earlier that uh, with regards to Samantha White, you were not pleased with her follow-up. What did you do about it? There was a memo given, a memo of concern. Did you do anything other than that? Um, other than work with her to try to assist, that was about it, other than just writing it down, saying, hey, these are some concerns that we have. But you didn't go out with her to see Millie and Layla? No. You didn't go out with her to see any of her clients, did you? No, I did not. And in fact, um, you were fired because she was fired, isn't that correct? I don't As know a why supervisor. it was term terminated, I just know term it was a result of this, uh, this case. Now, while the children were with the Lamberts, there were concerns about Millie getting very upset when she did not get her way, correct? That is what was reported by Samantha. And that's what you wrote? Yes, your during the staffing with Samantha. And um, Layla had begun to hit and pull hair, correct? That is what was noted. And it's fair to say, Ms. Warner, that um, you feel if it weren't for Ms. White, you would probably still have your job, correct? 
No, I don't feel that way. You don't feel that way. And you don't, you're not concerned at all about being a defendant in a lawsuit, in a civil lawsuit? No. Thank you. That's all I have. Okay, thank you, ma'am. You can step down. Mm -hmm.